feel a little bit uncomfortable standing here at the moment. <laughs> but you know, this would be good. What, what could go wrong with this? So, welcome back everybody. This is Etho, and we are in our netherite strip mine. You remember, we mined out two box high all, all around this area looking for the netherite. And now I've come back to it. We're going to TNT it up and try uncover a, a bit more. Now, <laughs> I don't know where to stand. How far I need to get back. We're talking like eight stacks of D&D. &D. It was pretty significant. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now that chewed out a big area. Down to bedrock in a couple places here. Okay. Now we're looking especially for the netherite after doing that. So I can see a couple pieces here. Just floating around. Okay, that's good. That's good. Another one over there. Got lots of quartz exposed. Um, another one over there. Found a few. Another one there. Yeah, yeah, there's a bit around here. That's good. Excellent. So we got 15 ancient debris from that. So it took about 8 stacks of TNT plus about 50 minutes of our time to set up the TNT and mine the debris afterwards. Yeah, so to be honest with you guys, a couple weeks ago, I thought they were about done adding new features to the Nether update here, and they were gonna enter bug fixing and like finishing it up, but no, they keep adding more and more cool stuff to it. So I have updated again. We're in 20W15A snapshot here with the, the newest stuff. There's a new Nether biome, another one. The uh, Basalt Deltas, we'll probably go check that out later today. Um, there's new blocks, new variants of blocks. We got nether brick fancy variations. We got new quartz stuff. Uh, we got, uh, there's a new, uh, black block, the black stone, which a lot of people are excited about and like 20 different variants of that thing, <laughs> uh, which is crazy. Um, yeah, now that I've updated though, we also have some of the other features that got added previously. So the smithing table, if you guys don't know this, it's for upgrading diamond armor to netherite armor so i can finally do that or tools as well i believe um so i thought uh, i thought you could do it like this but you can't kind of wish that was an option like this is a way to keep your enchantments right but if you've already made the netherite armor it's too late um you're supposed to just put the ingot in and there we go we got netherite puddle stompers just like that now let's try it on tools eater of worlds can we Oh, I'm, that's a crafting table. That's not going to do it. Eater of Worlds, can you be upgraded? Yes, you can. Amazing. For our first project this episode, guys, I thought we would address something that's also going to be coming up in this update. Uh, I believe they're getting rid of zero tick farms, and that has uh, some people maybe a little bit sad or unhappy, maybe even upset. <laughs> uh, they especially, I think, like the zero tick farms for the bamboo. You hook up bamboo to a zero tick farm, you basically have infinite free easy fuel for your super smelters, unlimited sticks, because you can craft bamboo into sticks as well, and it's just really nice and easy, right? So I thought we would try build like something similar to that, like an easy farm to set up. It's not too big. Um, it grows quickly and all that kind of stuff. So you can set up big fields of bamboo, but I think that's what those people don't like doing. Uh, so instead, we're going to make a bone meal farm. The major downside of this farm, though, of course, is it requires bone meal. But if you have bone meal, this is going to be probably one of the best bamboo farms you can build. We can automatically grow bamboo using a bone meal in a dispenser and then triggering it with redstone, which is what we're going to be doing in our farm. And the nice thing is if it reaches max height and you trigger it beyond that, it doesn't waste it. Let's get started. So I got a beacon set up over here for speed mining. We're going to be building this near our super smelter so we can hook it up to our fuel. And I'm going to put it underground, actually. We're going to dig down 16 blocks here. Hole is dug and we are ready here, so let's get to it. Now, I actually designed this farm for 1.50. I'm hoping it still works at 1.60. <laughs> we'll find out as we do it here. Uh, we need a 7x4 area. So, 2, 4, 6, 7. I always count by 2s. Except here, I counted by 4s. 7x4. Um, I think the bamboo needs to go right here. Yeah. Bamboo, go there. We got to get some dispensers. 
Probably got a mommy. Yep, that's what always happens. <laughs> that confuses me more than anything. Uh, and we're going to set up six dispensers around this. And now we go crazy with the hoppers. So hopper here, hopper there, hopper there, hopper there. Hopper here, hopper here. Hopper there, hopper there, hopper here, hopper here. We only really need one hopper running into each of these dispensers, but for some of them we're running two just so that the bone meal feeds into them at the same rate it gets used up. That way we can run the farm for longer if we want to. And then we're going to stock those barrels full of bone meal, and we're going to have hoppers running into all of these in a nice line. Power rails on top of the five hoppers here. We power it over here, and then we have a hopper minecart that bounces back and forth picking up, I, uh, not items, bone meal out of this double chest up here. And that goes to all five of these barrels then. And down into the dispensers. Oh, here we go. For the redstone, we're going to run into the dispensers like this for right now, but we might need to come back and adjust that. Just depends on how the farm runs here. Uh, and those dispensers are being bud power, which kind of confuses me. <laughs> uh, we get that in subtract mode. Run it back like this, and then we have to be careful not to lock this hopper over here. So I'm going to run redstone like this. And now that I'll run a, a loop to it. By the way, this is something I really like about the barrels in the game now. Um, unlike chests, you can actually send a redstone signal through them or put redstone dust on top of them. Which makes it a lot easier to compact certain things like what we're doing here. Um, so that's cool. Fifth block up on the bamboo, we're going to put a piece of soul sand here for a water elevator. We're going to install that at the very end though, so we don't wash away our redstone. And then the sixth block up here is where we start our column of sticky pistons. We want to go up ten blocks with these. Okay, so we're almost done with this. We just have to run redstone up to the column of pistons there. We do that with an observer detecting when this redstone changes. Put a piece of redstone dust on top of that. and then. Run that into a block here, to our first piston, and then we just do a staircase up like this, all the way to the top. Listen to that music, just like a zero-tick farm, it's loud and annoying. Cool, so we got the redstone done on this thing, now we just want to encase it in glass or whatever block you want here. In front of all the pistons, we need a block, uh, and then around the pistons, we want to surround with blocks. Around the bamboo here, around our water elevator. Go to this side as well, and we got to build this to the top then. And then for the very top layer here, we're going to cover over the piston, the bamboo, and everything except for the water elevator. Get our water in here for the elevator, and I think that's the final step. I'm going to find out now if I, I messed it up. <laughs> there we go. All right, here we go. This is the part that actually scares me, because I'm not sure if it's going to work or not. Um, I got my sound down. I got it loaded up with bone meal. We're gonna want to have some switch at the top there to turn this on, but for now, let's do that. Hopefully it's working. Oh, it's looking good. So you see it breaks the bamboo after it grows, and it goes right into the water column and then starts spewing out the top there. Let's see how these are using up the bone meal. So that's the speed we want to see it using it. That means it's activating every time. That one's activating every time. This one's not activating at all. That could be because it's like reaching max growth. It's hard to tell. Or it could be because it's being bud powered. I'm not sure. That one's going at a good speed. That one's at a good speed. So I think uh, I think actually this one's not running because the, the other five here are growing it uh, every time. And it grows two blocks every time. So if five of them trigger, it's growing ten blocks to the very top there. And this doesn't need to activate them. And actually, my game might start getting laggy soon here. <laughs> All right, let's load her up. So it's uh, it's gonna be quick, by the way, very quick. I hope. Okay, let's clear out our inventory. We stand right here. You can see the speed. That's pretty good, right? <laughs> well, it turns out. Uh, one wasn't good enough after all. I built four of them. We got four bamboozlers put together here, all redstoned up, all loaded up with bone meal. I uh, pretty much broke the bank on this project, actually. I only got, I got less than a chest full of bone blocks left now. I think I threw at least two double chests into this thing. Um, but they're going to last a long time. Like, this can run for several minutes before it runs out. 
Uh, and whenever we run it, we're only going to be running it for a couple seconds, probably. Because <laughs> it, it pretty much will instantly fill up our shulker boxes. Look at this thing. <laughs> oh, I can feel the lag. I can feel the lag. Oh, I should have cleared out the inventory first. <laughs> so, uh, all, the, all the streams end up pretty close together here. So, it will be pretty easy to connect them all and then uh, run them to whatever we want. I'm not gonna make like a hopper collection system for this thing though, because nothing's gonna keep up with this right. <laughs> yeah, this thing is actually ridiculous. I love it so much. Uh, I think it took 20 to 25 seconds to fill up that shulker box, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Where are these things landing? Are they falling out? Oh, they're going to the middle pretty much. Okay, so I think this thing, I did some math on it. I think it can uh, support about 256 furnaces running. Uh, like if this was constantly running and the furnaces were constantly running, I think about 256 is the number. Which is pretty nutty. Okay, well I think that's enough bamboo talk for today. We're going to head over to our pigment farm again today. We worked on this last episode. We added the enchanting station in here. We added some blue ice and made some other improvements. Uh, but we were having big issues with the, the piglins. Now I think it's all taken care of. So what I did is I cut some... Um, I don't know what you'd call that. Chasms? Channels? <laughs> into each of the diagonals of the farm. Uh, and then I put some blue soul torches in. And that makes the, the piglin guys run away from them. And they just fall right down uh, those, those slits we have in the farm. Um, we also have some trap doors lining that, so they try to walk across it. You see this? Birch trap doors. And it's working really well, actually. Like, better than I expected. There's a piglin. He's taking a, a casual stroll. When's he going to see the torch? Oh, he saw it. He's freaking out. He's running. And he's down. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm super happy this is, is working again. Like, this is one of the main farms I use in my world. I use it constantly. And now that gold's actually valuable. Uh, with the piglin trading, it's like, I really wanted this to work again. Uh, the funniest thing just happened. There's like some new sounds in the nether that I'm not used to yet. And I thought my stomach was growling. Like in real life, it sounded like my stomach growled. It's like, okay, I didn't really feel that, but I guess I must be hungry. Uh, then I did it again, and it's like, wait a second, what's going on? And I realized it's actually just one of the new sounds in the nether. You get so much stuff from these piglin guys, it's insane. <laughs> Soul sand, yes. Gravel, yes. Uh, shroom lights, crying obsidian, obsidian, leather, magma cream, fire charges, glowstone, quartz. It's like all kinds of crazy stuff. I didn't realize that you can get iron from them too, like a pretty decent amount. Um... I'm trying to get the soul speed enchantment books off them. So I got a, a level one and a level two. If I get another level two or a level one, I can make a level three. That's the max. We got another level two and a few more ones here. So I think I'm going to combine the two twos together for three. Oh, it's 12. Ooh, that means this is a high level enchantment. We might not be able to put on our boots. Oh, it's only 16. Really? Doing it. Okay, this is actually a bigger deal than I thought it was. So if you guys don't know, soul speed allows you to walk faster on soul sand and soul soil. And it's not like a, a little bit faster, it's actually significantly faster. Um, like this is, this is pretty nice. Uh, I do have a speed 2 beacon where I'm at here, so that's adding to it for sure. But even still, this is, this is pretty cool. You can put carpet over top of it, so if you want it to look nice, that's still possible. Oh, we're out of food. I can just feel some of you guys silently judging me right now. <laughs> it's like, what? Ethos eating fish? What's wrong with this guy? How old is his world and he, he can't afford decent food? Um, it's because I was crafting my golden carrots before. I wasn't actually buying them off of the villagers. I was making them. And now that we have the gold trading, I don't want to waste my gold on, on food, right? So... I'm in the middle of breeding up a farmer villager. He's just about ready. Oh, does it work on trapdoors? It works on trapdoors. Okay, but works on carpet, works on trapdoors, not on uh, daylight sensors or slabs, though. <laughs> well, I think I figured out how to do my tunnel on Hermitcraft when the update comes out. Just space them one block apart from each other, and oh, it's a fun trip to get the ethos place. 
Last episode, I asked you guys if I should take advantage of Cheatso here, and surprisingly, just about, I think everybody said yes, actually. <laughs> so, we're gonna Cheatso it up, get all the emeralds. And I finally traded with this guy enough we can buy the carrots. Oh yeah. Now, to be honest with you guys, for a long time, I felt like Sandy City was a bit of a doom project. We built one house a long time ago, and it was kind of ugly. I didn't really like it. And I felt like every other house we build after that has to look the same as the first one. And it's going to be nothing but a big ugly town. <laughs> so uh, I just left that one house forever. And then uh, we got the stripped, uh, stripped bark and stuff added to the game. Hello, Creeper. And uh, now we built the blacksmith over here. And since I built that blacksmith, man, it feels so much better just having one more building in the city. I, I think this is an actually pretty nice view looking down the street here. So that's cool. We're going to do some building today. We're going to add another house to Sandy City and, you know, just a few more and it might actually get finished one day. I think I'm going to put a new one over here. So I was laying down our foundation for the house here and I got to thinking this might be a good topic of discussion with you guys, actually. Like a question of the day for you guys. Is this an okay of way of doing the foundation? Because <laughs> I don't have a lot of house building experience. I'm actually very curious what you guys will say about this. Uh, so I think the proper technique when you're doing a foundation is to have straight walls, right? But I don't usually do that. I usually will make it like jet out a block here and there. Um, on purpose, I do that. And I I do it because I think it will add uniqueness to my build, but I'm not sure if that's a mistake. Because um, it makes it really hard to tie the build together afterwards when the walls don't line up and stuff. Uh, but at the same time, that forces me to do some weird stuff some uh, to finish off the build and sometimes that can look pretty cool the weird things I do and it, I know like this house isn't going to be the same as any other one I build because it's got some unique features to it so is that a good thing to do or not should I be laying out a str straight foundation let me know what you guys think about that planning on having some kind of stall in the front here I marked that with the planks and this is going to be our entrance and I'm going to probably line it with lime for some color and then stairs on top of that and then oak on top of that like we've been doing with the other buildings and like oak over top here oh snappers so check it out everybody we got ourselves a brand new building in sandy city our third one. Oh, and you just saw our our shutter system on our stall here it closes when it turns nighttime shutters go down uh we got to get a villager in in this little area here i did some testing and if you have a fence with carpet on top the baby zombies are not able to get in there. Even when these are open, they won't try to get the villager inside here. He seems to be perfectly safe. Um, so I want to try to get a villager with a workstation in there eventually. Um, if I put trap doors in front of the fences here, though, the, the baby zombies will be able to climb up those and get in. So I'm, I just put signs in front to make it look like it's a bit more structured. Um, but yeah, check out this place. What do you guys think? I... <laughs> Again, with what we talked about there, I don't know if it looks like cool and crazy or if it looks kind of sloppy. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of like it, though. I think it's pretty unique. Uh, we got like a back alley here. We'll probably make a, a nicer path eventually. Um, some interesting uh, structural stuff here. So I, I made it come out here and get supported. And then we got like a big box up there, like a tower. Okay, let's check out some details here. So this is a very ninja-friendly building. You can easily get onto the roof here. Um, unfortunately, the daylight sensors are bluish color. <laughs> Not ideal. Um, it would look probably better if we use like the slabs there, spruce slabs or something. But function before aesthetics, right? So we want our shutter system to close at nighttime. So that is definitely staying in. We got a pretty interesting roof here. It kind of slopes a few different directions. Uh, and meets in the middle here. Uh, we can get onto our balcony. Oh no, you're breaking down my doors, man! I really wish they stopped doing that. I hate that feature. <laughs> I never want to build with doors because of that. <sighs> yeah, we get up on our balcony. Burn to death for a little bit here. We got a sun cover. So we can relax, take it easy. We're growing some beetroots in our, our planter here. Brewing stand. We got a shelf there for some potted plants. Uh, nice view of the city from here. Another tulip, a little cover for when we come out. So this is uh, this is one of the rooms. Our upstairs. This is probably going to be like a bedroom. 
living area sort of thing. And look out over here as well. Tend to our berry bushes or ninja out onto the wall. Get another view from here. We got some shutters that are open. Um, oh, they're trying to get me, aren't they? <laughs> oh, did I show you? Uh, here, here's the real ninja move. You can get up over here, you jump up, jump up onto here, and then you flip the trap door, you get up over here, flip it back down, and boom, we're on the roof. So we're growing a couple plants up here as well. I got string on top so the trees won't actually grow. Um, we can get down to our floor here. And then I never actually did the interior for this main floor. I wanted to see what you guys said, if you had any suggestions, and then I'll try to incorporate them later. Oh, we're in new terrain here. You see the lava falling down? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So before we end this episode, I would like to try to find the new nether biome, the Basalt Deltas. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, just quickly and screenshots and stuff. So let's go take a look. Oh, that's the... <laughs> Holy smokes, they, they do a lot of damage. Whoa, okay, wait a second, wait a second. Good thing we got the good carrots here. <laughs> Whoa! I got good armor on. That was insane. Okay, I gotta be careful, I guess. The Crimson Forest. Yeah, these guys are nuts. The range on them, too. Can I hit you? Okay, you got him. I got him. Oh, <laughs> you kind of knocked me upwards. Whew. They seem to uh, they seem to be pretty tough, those guys. They are really hard to hit without getting hit. Okay, so this is the new gold ore. Try to get some of that. Fortune, yeah. We can still touch it. Yep. Dude, this looks so cool. Uh, so we're at 38. 44. 50. That's 6. We got 12 that time. Uh, I can't count anymore. Oh, I was 15 that time. Denied. Oh, I missed him. <laughs> oh, that's embarrassing. There we go. Oh, is this it? I think we might have found it. Yeah, Basalt Deltas. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, we got a fortress in here, too. Oh, cool. Let's go check this out. All the little details, like the music, the sound effects, the particles, the fog. Oh, it just creates such a such a cool atmosphere. It feels like we're in a totally foreign new area in the game, right? New blocks. Oh, okay. Here's a big patch of the blackstone stuff. Cool, cool. So apparently this stuff is like uh, cobblestone as well. You can like craft furnaces out of them or stone tools. So there's, we got glowstone in here still. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, we got a blaze spawner over there. Uh, so this is warp forest over here. We got soul sand valley over here. Then we got the new basalt deltas. And I know we're right next to the crimson forest as well. This is going to be like my dream spot with all the biomes together. And we have a fortress. Yeah, I think if I'm going to build a nether base, it's going to be like right around here. This is like the dream. Uh-huh, so do you guys remember that feeling of the nether being uh, maybe a little bit underdeveloped, a little empty? Well, I think that's gone. It's like a totally different place in there now with all the new biomes. It feels really good. Lots of stuff to, to check out and new mechanics. I'm really happy with all the changes Mojang have done. Uh, I think the Crimson Forest is still my favorite out of the, the biomes, though. The Delta one is interesting, but it's like very gray. It's like you have to build something in there before it feels good, I guess, maybe. Like, the gray is good if you want, like, a blank backdrop, I guess. And uh, anything you build is really going to stand out in there. So it's it's interesting. Anyways, comment of the day, guys. It says, hey, Etho, how is your fitness slash training going? Are you still pursuing it? Jetpack Jan. Great name. Yeah, so the short answer to that question is it's going very well, actually. Um, so if you guys don't know the story, about a year and a half ago, I started working out uh, pretty casually. Because I was starting to feel a bit sluggish, um, having trouble focusing and stuff like that. If you if you don't know, exercise is more than just uh, physical. It also improves your mental health. So I I got thinking maybe I should start working out. 
um, see what kind of effect that has. And I was just doing it very casually, like five minutes a day, maybe twice a week when I first started. Like I do push ups and that's it for the day. Or I would do sit ups and that's it for the day and do that like twice a week, <laughs> which is like nothing. Uh, but I noticed big changes just from that little amount of activity. Um, and I wasn't pushing myself very hard at first either. I uh, did that for about six months. It was going pretty good. I started to increase my activity a little bit during those six months. And then summertime came around. It got really hot and I just stopped like almost completely. It got it was like unbearable to work out in the heat. Um, so I just I kind of gave up for a bit, got lazy with it as well. Uh, but then autumn came around and I started working out again. And then uh, like from autumn last year till now, I've been working out uh, pretty regularly. Um, I even went from like twice a week to probably five or six times a week now. But I'm still pretty casual about it. Maybe work out like 10 minutes a day. Just at home, don't go to the gym or anything. Uh, a lot of people think you have to go to the gym to get into shape. <laughs> you don't. You can just start working out at home, guys. You can do it right now if you really want. You just got to talk yourself into it. Um, I have started doing a few activities that are more difficult, though. I, one of my favorites that I saw, like, the best results with was, like, uh, I think you call it a neutral grip, like, between a, a chin-up and a pull-up. Um, except I don't use, like, my full grip strength. I only use the tips of my finger. <laughs> it took a while before I was even able to do one of these things. Uh, but once I started doing those, it, man, my shoulders got big and my my arms and it works the abs and everything pretty much um yeah so i'm i'm trying to get into more difficult activities because i find they have a, a better result uh once you've been doing it for a while um but yeah definitely definitely noticed some big improvements of getting stronger don't quite have a six pack yet but there's definitely some shape there and uh just overall feeling pretty good about it so yeah i recommend you guys try it out if you if you can spare five minutes a day or whatever. Anyways, I'm going to stop rambling. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Thank you for watching. Until next time, ha have yourselves a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.